chapter number three. So this series will uh, carry us through uh, up to Lent. Uh, Lent will be starting uh, sometime in the early part of February. Uh, this series is called Fast Forward. Uh, our whole year we're hoping to have a theme around forward movement. Uh, what does it mean for us, the people of God, to be posturing ourselves, leaning forward into what God would have us to do. If you were here last week, you may remember and recall that we spent some significant time uh, challenging ourselves as we move into this new season, this new year, to keep growing. And many of you may remember that we all put together these nice uh, cards of, of, of uh, kind of prayer requests, praise reports of what we were excited about that God did in 2014. And there's some prayer requests of what we're hoping God can do for us. 2015. And uh, dare I say uh, that uh, no matter what you want from God, uh, no matter how long you've been saved, no matter how holy, sanctified, righteous, tongue talking, free from the chandeliers, rolling on the floor, levitating, walking on water, raising the dead, healing the sick, how I mean, you know there's always some relationship and uh, 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 more perfect. Uh, salvation issues that we can be working out in it relates to our walk with God. Amen? And this consecration is intended to posture us to not just have aspirations and New Year's resolutions, but to actually be in a place where God can actually do some work in and through us. Um, in this way, I believe this passage uh, will give you and I a wonderful framework for how to understand what I'm hoping will be the undergirding key framework and underpinnings of this consecration. Uh, Philippians chapter number 3, it is on the screen. Why don't you read along with me as we read verse 10 through 14. The words of the Apostle Paul, reading along this wise, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering. By becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on. So I say press on. I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved. I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly calling of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God, for us the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. Amen. All right, we're going to uh, spend the next few moments just working through this passage, launching this series on Fast Forward. Uh, the first sermon in this series will be Press Forward. Press Forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God. For all of us, the people of God, we ask you to hide your word in our heart so we will not sin against you and send your anointing. That makes preaching and teaching easy. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say amen. 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 Tell your per the person next to you, I'm pressing forward. Tell them that I'm pressing forward. Now, uh, I am convinced that one of the greatest challenges for human development is the fatigue factor. And if uh, any of us would be honest about uh, the way this plays itself out, we may be able to acknowledge that our challenge is not the aspiration to move forward, to be better, or even for change. The challenge is the fatigue or the, 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 the tired uh, cloak uh, and burden that can easily fall upon us when we are constantly stuck in a cycle of necessary change. How many of you uh, can certainly reflect on the times when you were trying to move forward in life uh, and the 
consistency of change started to wear you out. And it is not as if you're unaware that change is inevitable. It is this sense, I believe, that uh, there are certain limitations that we have as humans that you do just get tired. Get tired of fussing at your kids every day. Get tired of going to work. Paying bills, studying for tests, arguing with your spouse. Get tired of having to wake up in the middle of the night and soothe crying kids back to sleep. That the fatigue of life can easily grind on us or at us in such a way that it may cause us to lose the appetite for necessary growth and forward movement. <clears throat> but I want to submit to you today that one of the great challenges that you and I must overcome, particularly in our spiritual life, is the tendency to settle rather than keep moving. Because every one of our kind of bedrock theological beliefs and assumptions will always create opportunity for us to tap out and rest in the grace and the providence of God. And we should do so. And we also see in Scripture that God didn't rest all seven days. <laughs> God was doing some work on day one, day two, day three, four, five, six. And on the seventh day, God rested. That if God has to do some work to bring to fruition the divine imagination and the things that are necessarily uh, must be in place for growth and for life to be at, 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 at work. How many of you know that you and I, man, have to sign up a little bit for some work as well? That growth does not happen just because you want it to happen. And uh, Henry now, he's a wonderful religious and spiritual thinker and writer. He writes that those who think they have arrived have lost their way. Those who think they have reached their goal have missed it. Those who think they are saints are demons. An important part of the spiritual life is to keep longing, waiting, hoping, and expecting. Live in ignorance of 
God rather than struggle to know God. Now Paul writes this letter uh, and it's a very powerful letter. It's a very important letter. The letter that we've read in our text today. Uh, a letter to the Philippian church. A letter uh, from Philippi. And Paul is writing this letter in the midst of a great struggle. Paul is not writing this letter uh, at the height of his successful career. But Paul is writing this letter in Philippi while he is in jail. Arguably the most lowest moment of Paul's career, Paul is writing one of the most powerful letters, I believe, in Scripture. And Paul has as his resume someone who is not necessarily, you would think, uh, needing to struggle. I mean, if you look at the work and the ministry of Paul, I mean, Paul has written the most letters. He's responsible at least for 50, 60 percent of the biblical letters in the New Testament. Paul is not somebody who was not educated in the best Jewish schools. He's a guy of great privilege. He had the favor of some of the most powerful people in the empire at the time. Paul was a pretty hooked up guy, but Paul for you and I as we move into 2015 and think about where and how the struggle contributes to our progress. Paul says it like this. Giving you and I a framework of what it means to struggle. He says, I want to know Christ. And my brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you that nothing Avoid suffering 
at any cost. Yes, sir. Yes. I had a friend uh, tell me, one of my atheist agnostic friends tell me that uh, uh, my Christian faith is masochist. Said you all like to glorify and elevate suffering. You feel it's redeemable. And I said, well, I believe that uh, our Christian faith is realistic. Oh, masochist, man, I don't know, but it's realistic because there is no struggle-free way to live in this world. <laughs> I mean, oh, you're going to struggle going to heaven? <laughs> and you show sure enough going to struggle going to hell. Somebody say amen, right? So if you won't struggle, why not?
believe that as we get more in alignment with Christ, our favor with other people becomes more likely. Because if I learn to love folks the way Christ loves me, yeah. if I learn to forgive folk the way Christ forgives me, if I learn to accommodate folk woo, the way Christ accommodates me, if I learn to live sacrificially for folk the way Christ has done for me, how can we not be in favor with God and one another? Knowing Christ, being intimately connected and aligned with Christ is the primary purpose of our consecration of 2015. As we move forward, we're not moving forward in our own way. We're moving forward with a trajectory and purpose of knowing and aligning with Christ. Amen. As you move forward, then you have to ask yourself, where in your world, in your life, is this call to participation even being made? Where in my circle of life and experience am I being called <coughs> into greater knowledge and alignment with the ways of Jesus? Now, as my quote said earlier, the folk who don't think they have to do that are the folk who have already lost their way. Yeah. The folk who think they are the saints are the ones that may be under some demonic influence. So, the first step that I believe the biblical text gives to us today as a process of what does it mean to move forward and know Christ is this idea that you and I must engage, listen, in honest reflection. It's the first thing that I think is so important if we're going to move forward in 2015. Everybody say honest reflection. <laughs> now, verse number 12, it says that I have not already obtained this goal, nor have I already been made perfect, but I am pressing on to make it Because we can often turn perfect. 
perfection into an idol. And we can start our year off chasing perfection and not Christ. And how many of you know that Christ is not asking for you and I to be perfect. He's asking us to be in relationship with him. Relationship with Christ is what makes us perfect. It don't keep you from 
crime. It does not guarantee you will not suffer injustice or loss. But having Christ means that it will be different. Your experience of it will be different. And the difference it makes is the knowledge that is attained. I love this quote by C.S. Lewis. Uh, 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 I, I, I don't think I used it the, 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 the first service, but do you have it up there, Teddy? God who foresaw your tribulation has specially armed you to go through it, not without pain, but without stain. Reminders of why I didn't pay attention in the Lamaze class. 
Oh, um, I don't remember that for the second time. Maybe I did. I feel like the second, first service this went way better than the first service. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, me, let me try a different thing we're talking about. The baby wall, it is inside the mother. Is often only able to be aware of the womb of the mother. And the baby inside the mom, right? And the whole world of this baby is only knowing the immune system of the mom, the nutrition of the mother, the strength of the mother. But when the baby reaches this full term, the womb of the mother is unable to hold this baby any longer. So the baby
circumstance and situation. This is what the consecration is for. The consecration is an opportunity for you and I to get a higher focus. Amen. For the next month, we are engaging in practices that will help you have a higher focus. Because you have to train yourself to look higher. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm one of these people who, who, who have a streak inside of me that has become very in the last couple of years of being preoccupied with the present. And I can get so wound up and turned up in what's happening right now that, that I can forget that there's a higher calling, a higher aim, and a higher focus that I must have. And when my eyes <clears throat> fall from the higher focus, the disciplines of spirit and heart are necessary to cause me to have a higher focus. As a pastor and preacher, I am not immune to that myself. So don't get it twisted. Amen. This ain't, you don't graduate to this place. You are always in school. Always learning. Always having to engage in the practices that keep you with a higher focus. And be routinely engaged in these practices because these practices work to keep our days high. And you don't have to make a choice when the nice, medium way Are shoving my face. <laughs> I have to press forward. I have to make a choice. Not because there's something wrong with the medium well trident steak ribs hamburgers. <laughs> Retraining my spirit and my heart and my mind. And I'm making a choice to look higher. This idea that I may not be able to engage in certain practices of TV and music and social and other things is not a of the things per se. It is a sacrifice I'm making and I'm pressing forward so my gaze can be on a higher call. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of us need to press forward. Yes, sir. We need to say that I do want to move forward in 2015, but I realize that I can't just move forward by doing the same thing. I've been watching The Wire, and it's been great watching, you know, the shows and stuff, you know. Particularly after Ferguson, it has really stimulated my mind in all different kinds of ways. And, and, and what was interesting, though, there are certain moments in, in, the, in the show that I remember the episode, there was too rough of a scene, so I press forward. So I'm trying to accelerate the watching of the shows or move past something that I don't necessarily want to experience. I want to submit to you that this consecration may be a way that God is trying to accelerate growth spaces in your life. Trying to move you past some things that you seem to get stuck on. Things that can play in a loop. Anybody ever had those experience? Man, I feel like I just go around and around the Mulberry Bush. Sometimes you need to press forward. Like a literal forward button. I'm skipping this. I, I seen this scene before. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give a high five and tell them I seen this scene before. I'm not. 2015, I, I, I'm committed to some new scenery. These spiritual disciplines give you an opportunity to experience 
Hallelujah. Press forward, my brothers and sisters, is, is the opportunity before us. Now, it's clear that, you know, a lot of us are, 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 are going to struggle during this month to engage in all of these activities of engagement <laughs> and abstinence, right? But the struggle is what is going to give you some knowledge you did not have. So don't be so legalistic in the way you are trying to learn about Christ. Be open to the divine surprise. Be open to the times you will fall and while you're getting back up, you're learning that, wow, Christ's hand is big enough and strong enough to lift me up. Be open to the idea that even in your weakest moments and in your most frustrating spaces that the power of God is able to redeem and restore. Press forward. This is our prayer. My prayer for us in this season. Let's stand, everyone, and grab the hand of the person.